Hi everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I've got a great project for you today. Take a look at this quilt behind me. Isn't this fun? I love the idea of the migrating geese. I've been watching that and I think I've come up with a really easy way to do it. So to make this quilt, what you're gonna need is one roll of two and a half inch strips and we've used Nova by Basic Gray for Moda. You're also gonna need some background fabric and we have used about two yards and it covers your little geese, it covers your sashing, it covers that inner border. For your outer border over here, you're gonna need a yard and a quarter, and it's a six inch border. Your backing is gonna be four and a half yards, and you're gonna use a vertical seam, and it just comes together so quick. This is gonna make a quilt that is like 73 by 70, so it's a good size quilt, and it's a lot of fun. Let me show you how to do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my strips. And um, I'm gonna lay them out like this, and I'm gonna make sure that my selvage edges line up together. You know, sometimes they do, and sometimes you need to make a little adjustment. These ones are lining up real nice, and I'm gonna stack two of them like this. Now, the other thing you're gonna need is a binding tool. Uh, a lot of people use this binding tool for binding, and it works great with that. It's also great for making a braid, which is what we've done here. We've used this braid, but at the end of the day, I snowballed the top of it, and it created that migrating geese look. All right, so we're going to take our strips right here. I've got them laid out. I've, I have now four layers that I'm cutting through. Cut however many you're comfortable with. I'm gonna lay my ruler right on the edge of my strip like this, and I'm gonna trim off the selvage edge right here. And then I'm gonna trim up this side right here. Now this is an angle. I'm gonna move this away a little bit, and I'm gonna cut this little tip right here. Now, when you do this and your strips are folded, you're gonna get some pieces that go to the left and some pieces that go to the right, and you wanna make two stacks of those. You're actually gonna need 100 of each direction. So we're gonna stack those up, and I'm gonna keep cutting this to show you how I did this. So now we flip our ruler over, and you line it up along that angle, and the angle is already done for you, and all you have to do is cut this straight edge here, and this little, little tiny bit off the end of there, and again, we're just gonna stack them, and I kinda like to do that as I go along. So here's this one and this one and this one and this one there we go now we're left with this piece that isn't quite long enough to get um, to put you know to fit on our tool so we're going to want to open it up and you need one going each direction so the way to do that is to put them right sides together just like this so we're going to lay these right sides together make sure there the fold doesn't make any little tuck feel it to make sure it's nice and smooth you're going to lay your tool on there and we're just gonna cut on the angle again, just like this. All right, so you have this little leftover piece and, uh, and then you have these pieces right here. And we should have one that goes each direction, and we do. So that's how you do that. You're gonna need 100 of each. Now what we wanna do is we wanna snowball the top of the squares. Now, I told you two yards of yardage to make this, but I love these little Kona squares. They're two and a half inch squares and they they are so handy, no cutting. You can also, if you have extra strips laying around, you can get your two and a half inch squares out of a strip. So, you know, just, if you have some scraps, I know you guys have some scraps, so we just wanna do this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to draw or iron a sew line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finger press this. It's gonna give me a sew line. All of my, um, all of my angles that are going to the out, the angle at the top is the opposite. So I'm gonna sew in like this, okay? So we're gonna go to the sewing machine. We're gonna sew right on that line and just like this. And you're gonna to wanna to do this to all your pieces. All right. Sometimes uh, you have a hard time seeing that line, but uh, you can see right here, I've got my line and then I'm going to use my, my little ruler and I'm just going to come in a quarter of an inch and I'm just going to trim that off. Oh, hang on. I got a thread right there. All right. So I'm just going to trim this off. Now we're going to press that open. And again, 
you're going to do this to all of your pieces. So keep them in their same piles like this. So I have a pile of these that are done and then I have a pile going the other direction and see your blocks should come in to each other. So just make sure whatever angle this one is, you're coming in toward it. And let me stack up a few here. All right, I have them all. There we go. All right, so now let me show you how to create the braid. So what I did to create the braid and the geese is I took a two and a half inch square and I cut it directly in half like this. And then I took one of these right here and I'm gonna start it on each side. So we're gonna start with the side where the fabric is next to the geese, just like this. We're gonna lay this on here like this and we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch down on this side. So let's come over to the sewing machine and do that. Put our needle up and we're gonna line our quarter of an inch. And then we're gonna and, and so now we have a piece that looks like this. It looks a little weird. We're gonna go ahead and press that down. Now we're gonna take our piece that's going the other direction and we're going to put it over here. Okay, I grabbed the wrong side. How you know whether you grab the wrong side or not is this fabric, you want the fabric to go up next to the white. So then we're gonna add this piece on over here. Now I like to sew from the top, so I'm just gonna lay this right here and I'm gonna sew my quarter of an inch right down the side. And you can see this is starting to form up. And you sew all the way down to the end of your, uh, um, of your little geese like this. All right, now let's press this open. Well, let me show you first. So you can see, here's my quarter of an inch all the way down, and then we're gonna press this open. Now this little part right here, this is actually kind of the, the most difficult part about this is the little start right here that we're making. And I'm gonna iron this seam over. I want it to lay over this way. And it just takes some convincing with the steam. All right, so now we have this right here. So now you see, see these these edges right here that, that come on the binding tool, so it's already at the 45, that's gonna make your braid. So now what we're gonna do is again, your fabric, your printed fabric is gonna go next to your geese, and you're gonna lay this on here like this, and see this is gonna make uh, a braid that's already at a 45 all the way up. So we're gonna add another piece, and I'm just gonna add a few of these so that you can see how this comes together. I have one that's just about, um, you know, that's already started a little bit of the way for you to see. But I'm going to show you how to get this together first. Also, when I do a quilt like this that requires ironing at every seam, I make myself a little nest. So um, where my studio is, I'm going to have a little board that's right next to me. I actually use a TV tray. Uh, cover it with an ironing cloth, and I just sew and iron and sew and iron. It makes it really convenient. All right, so now we're going to put this one over here. So can you see how this is building? And we'll add another, and we'll add another. Wait. Oh, this one's going the wrong direction. So you'll just keep adding them on like this, and, and it'll just grow long. So then you'll get a piece that looks like this. So I have one that's done just a little ways. And obviously, I'm gonna go ahead and make that, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that long, but I have this one little piece I show you because I wanna show you how I started and how I finished. So once I get my long braid like this done, um, right here at the very end, so where's my end? Here, right here. See, see right here, uh, I used my little geese as the starting point. And so what I did was I took my little geese right here and I just put my ruler, I laid it on the edge of that geese right there. And then I just trimmed these off right here. Just like that. And that makes your straight edge for your starting point. Now your finishing point, you had to do, you have to do some squares up here to make it square and blend in. And I actually was really excited because I kind of thought these would work, um, but they didn't really work and they didn't give me the geese. And so, 
I had to go back with my background fabric. So I cut one square uh, for one side. You're going to have two squares or two different sizes because this side is going to be longer than this side. So this size right here, I think I cut it about uh, six and a half. It could be six and a quarter and save you a little room. And I just put it on here like this and sewed. I always like a little bit of extra room when I'm doing mine uh, so I can trim it off and make sure that, um, you know, make sure I have enough. I'm pretty sure you can get away with six and a quarter. I think that's what the pattern says. You know me, I always just do it and try it, and then they have to write it and figure out what I've done. All right, so I'm ironing this back, and now I have my, my square on the other side right here. It's going to be a little bigger. We're going to put that right on there. Sew a quarter of an inch down. All right, so now I've got this sewn down, and let's iron that back. And then we can square off this top. You know, I realized I just told you the wrong size. This big one is six and a half. This small one is five and a half. But I'm pretty sure you could get away with a six and a quarter. Um, so let me go ahead and trim up this edge now. So I'm going to line my ruler kind of up along this edge. Clean up any little stray parts that are like, you know, creeping out right there. We're going to cut this right across the top straight. And then I'm going to come down this other side. So you can see I've got, you know, I've got quite a bit of wiggle room here. Make sure that you're lined up and you're square at the top. And then you've made your little, your little top so it hangs in there really straight. Now for each row, you're going to need 20, 20 of these. There's five rows and we're going to put 20 in each row. And so it just comes together so quick and fun because once you get these rows done, you just lay this sashing in here. Now the sashing doesn't match to anything, but you can see that we're going this way with this row and we're going this way with this row. So they switch and change and it just comes together so cute. Now I just wanted to show you one more little thing. This is one where I started with the white fabric and used the colored fabric as the geese. So don't be afraid to play with this. Make sure you pick a geese that's going to pop and really show because when you do your work on these, you want to make sure that at the end of the day, you have an awesome looking quilt. So I really enjoyed making this. It's fun to take a tool that you use for something else and get a new use out of it. And I just hope you enjoyed this tutorial on the Geese in Motion quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.